Last time we discovered that we had run out of vault footage from good historical movies, so now we have to go with whatever we can scrounge up. Apparently this is it. I am Merlin, soon to be court wizard for the greatest monarch of them all, King Arthur of the Round Table. Gentlemen, without you, there will be serious trouble in Camelot. They're frozen in time. They can't hear him. He keeps talking to them. I think Merlin's been cooped up with his potions and spells a little too long. When next we meet, you will remember nothing of this meeting, but you will do whatever I ask. Go. He disappears and things start moving again. Doug, look. We're a long way back. Could be Europe in the Middle Ages, maybe earlier. We better keep out of sight until we find out a little more. Just do what you usually do. Go find someone and start a fight with them. Or never mind, they'll come to you. Service with a snarl. It never occurs to these guys to put up their hands and try to announce that they come in peace. But for once in their time-traveling days, they win. The Vikings run away. Let's get as far away from here as we can. Stand! Put away your spear. Drop it to the ground. After you put away your sword, you have had your last warning. Put that sword down or I'll run you through. You said you were going to do what? The kid realizes they're not Vikings and says, we need strong arms to repel this invasion. Are you with us? We want no part of your fight. Cowards! No! No, 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 no. Put that thing away, young Arthur. I'm here to help you. Who are you, old man? One day you will know me very well indeed. None of them seem bothered by the fact that he appeared out of nowhere. Gentlemen, you will fight for this young man. You will pledge your lives to his safety. We'll fight alongside you against the Vikings. You lead and we'll follow. The legends about Merlin are all over the place. In one, he's the most noble soul ever. In another, he's this manipulative jerk. In others, he's all manner of in-between. Originally, he was loosely based on a poet and minstrel who was certifiably insane. He's one of those rare characters that you can make into just about anything you want because somebody else already did. For characterization, I'm partial to the Sam Neill miniseries myself, but that's in large part because I like Sam Neill. I don't like this Merlin. What's the time fix? Sixth century. I've narrowed it down to 544 AD. Spatial fix? The coast of Cornwall. In England. If they're with Arthur in the 540s, they're not fighting Vikings. At that time, the enemy would have been the Saxons. Now, if the year was 840, we might be dealing with Vikings. Right now, it looks like the time tunnel transplanted someone again, like it did Machiavelli. Either it moved Arthur from the 6th century to the 9th, or it moved the entire Viking invasion the other direction. Arthur, you're leading us away from the castle. Why? We thought you came from there. I did once, now it's being held by Viking. He has to build an army to go take it back, but it's going to take a while. How many do you have so far? Two. <laughs> you mean we're your army? So far, yes. Well, there's nothing like starting at the bottom. And he may not even have that if those Vikings are quick enough. <laughs> And they just might be quick enough. Doug took a bad one to the shoulder. What's the matter? What's going on? Doug's dead. What? It's true, I'm afraid, General. We saw one of the men run him through with a sword. You've seen both of them hurt like that before. Tony's been dead before and always gets better. What makes you think Doug can't do the same thing? His body was dragged away. Oh, no. And Tony? Captured. 
Now that they're separated, we've lost our fix on them completely. They go back and start probing for Tony since there's still a chance of getting him out of there. And for once, they don't have to try and track him over great distances. Without this kind of artificial help, Tony has trouble staying put. Never mind. It works. The guard is now locked in the cell and Tony's looking for Arthur. In 1968, they're ready to switch Tony and get him out of there, but General Kirk says not until we're absolutely sure about Doug, and I'm not absolutely sure. Start a probe. Now wait. I saw it. A reaction. You're getting something. Refine it. He is alive. He must be. He wouldn't be getting that signal. Oh, he's alive. And much like Tony last episode, he's enjoying his convalescence. You again? I would appreciate a show of gratitude. I rescued you from the battle last night and brought you here. Brought me where? You're in the castle of King Lodigan of Carmelite. I am his daughter. You must have a name. I'm called Guinevere. This time he gets the good-looking nurse. Now if that weird guy with a beard would go away. Instead, he tells Guinevere, get the man some clothes, he has things to do. She protests that his wound is too severe, but she's wrong. Nothing. The wound is gone. Of course it's gone. Now, get him some clothing. Whatever form your rendition of Merlin takes, he's supporting cast for the hero. So he has to be a sympathetic character, even when he's making bad choices like giving in to Uther Pendragon's lower nature. The reader or whoever has to want to see him succeed in the end. I want to cover this guy in peanut butter and set a hundred puppies loose on him. You escape. You men are free while you can. Not without you. Arthur is in bad shape, but this is his father's castle, so he knows it well. There's a place they can hide. It's a secret room behind a wall, a pre medieval panic room, if you like. Now for the big question, did he see how to open it? The control room crew can't come up with a logical explanation for how Doug's wound disappeared. They're just happy he's alive. And they have a solid fix on him. Can you hold the fix on Doug while we establish one for Tony? Well, we've never done it before, but... Oh, you have too. Multiple times. And even if you hadn't, there are no rules anymore, remember? If we can have a 6th century magician bopping around all over the place, you can... whatever that was you said. All right. Switch them. Now! No! Young lady, you will touch no controls until further notice. We never touched the controls. How did he materialize? Switch them at once! Do something to get his attention and have Jig shoot him in the back. Young lady, you must learn to obey orders. She does. Just not from clowns and stupid outfits who show up out of nowhere and start throwing them around. What is this? Who are you? How'd you get in here? Let's not waste time with unnecessary questions. I've a great deal to do and very little time to do it. Please have Jiggs kill this guy. He has me so annoyed, I don't even want to finish the episode. He is one of the worst TV characters I have ever had the misfortune to watch. 
I'm not joking. As I develop my script right now, I'm not sure I can get through this. The characterization is seriously raising my blood pressure. Dopey Hat Ego Guy finally introduces himself. I deal in history before the fact. Certain things are written in the pages of prophecy. It's my job to give them a little nudge towards fulfillment. He's a voyager? Then shouldn't his guidebook say something about not being a person this now? General, we're losing our chance to shift them. Ah, they must remain where they are. You are forbidden to move them. Why can't he just say, I need them where they are, and explain why? Why does he have to be so arrogant about it? He's explained who he is and what he does. Why not just ask for their cooperation? And says, how are you going to stop us? He says, magic. Ray says, I don't believe in magic. <laughs> he couldn't, oh, say, make a tree grow out of the floor or transport himself to a different part of the room or produce flowers for Anne. No, he has to throw his weight around and try to prove not just his power, but his manly superiority. All magic comes with a price. I think I know what Merlin's cost him. You claim to be in a hurry. For what? Why did you come here? No. To prevent you moving your travelers from our time just yet. You're asking me to let two men die out there? My dear fellow, they won't die unless you waste too much of my time. If your time is so precious, then why are you sitting here talking in circles instead of getting to the point of what you want from Doug and Tony? And why it has to be them specifically? Even if you are a wizard, Doug and Tony aren't. They can't help you. On the contrary, young lady, they must help. Magic can only accomplish so much. After that, it takes the energies of ordinary mortals dedicated to a cause. I still recommend several well-placed bullets. It's not often I reach this point with a character, but he is so badly written, I'm willing to go that far. Just tell them why. In the time he spent proving what a big shot he was, he could have told them something meaningful and even gotten them on his side. But that might mean treating them almost as equals. And everybody knows that's just silly. Better to mess with the boys' minds and try to scare everyone else. He's got me to where I want Arthur to lose. If that means the Vikings take England and we all end up speaking like this. Is he the chocolate or the moose? <laughs> so be it. We can shift them in spite of you. My dear fellow, do let me give you a friendly word of warning. Don't. Bang, bang, bang. At least he's shooting at someone else for a change. Hey, you can't come in here. This is secret. Doug is making his way to the castle to scope it out. At least until he discovers Guinevere is following him. I can show you a way to get to their castle. We must hurry. <laughs> Within seconds, they're both captured. I suppose that's one way to get into the castle, though maybe not the most effective, depending on your goal. The Viking leader, Wogan, comes in and orders his man to kill all three of them, starting with Arthur. Doug is wondering why Merlin hasn't shown himself. A lot of us are. Stop! I was detained. If you mean the time tunnel, you did that all yourself. If you had stopped talking and said something, it wouldn't have happened. But it'll be their fault because it couldn't possibly be his. He's Merlin the Infallible. More precisely, he's Merlin, the this is how I cover my screw-ups. He waves his hand, and not only do the shackles come off, all their wounds are fixed. If you can perform this kind of miracle, you don't need us. Wrong. Certain things must be done by men, not magic. Winning a throne is one of them. Then we'll have to work fast. Get us out of here. I can't. I've already used too much magic. 
I can only work one more miracle for some time to come, and I intend to save that for a real emergency. Getting recaptured by the Vikings inside the castle and getting another arrow through the heart isn't a real emergency? In short, gentlemen, the next step is entirely up to your collective ingenuity. In other words, gentlemen, I have dragged all of you this far against your will, and now I'm dumping you in the lap of the enemy to fend for yourselves. Can I please dump him in the river? First, they have to get through the door. With a pot and lid, some water, and a pair of thumb screws, they devise a makeshift pressure cooker. Hang it on the doorknob, position a couple of torches under it, and wait. Let's get moving. Arthur isn't sure what just happened, but he's sure the door's open. That's the part that counts. He helps Doug find a way out of the castle, and Doug goes for Guinevere's father and his knights. Tony and Arthur are still in the castle, searching for Guinevere's father's daughter. I've located a chamber. Where? In the turret room, directly below the watchtower. Is it guarded? Heavily. How do we get up there? I have a secret way. Follow me. Doug is back with the knights, but there aren't nearly enough to take on Wogan and his Vikings. Merlin has another idea. Vikings have no fear of gentlemen fighters. Vikings only fear other Vikings. Sorry. I don't have any. I do. What are you talking about? Vikings attacking Vikings. An inspired thought. Yes, Merlin, a truly inspired thought. When he finally finishes congratulating himself, he waves his hands and all their clothes, helmets, and weaponry turn into Viking stuff. Now it looks like another Viking clan is challenging Wogan's rule. I'm out of miracles, my son. The rest is up to you. If he's out of miracles, how'd he do that? It's so simple to adjust a scene like that so it's internally consistent. Nobody in charge caught that glaring contradiction which illustrates how badly we've given up. Tony and Arthur have reached the roof of the tower. They take out some guards, then Arthur shinnies down a rope to Guinevere's room, lets her know what's going on and what to expect, and shinnies back up. It's time for the attack. <laughs> There were two guards up there. They threw one of them over the battlements. He's the other one. Guinevere's guards head for the walls. Come with me. That's Wogan, the leader. What's he doing in here? Why isn't he out there leading? Vikings! Vikings! We're attacked by Vikings! Your arms! If you're going to do that, you do it like this. Not like this. Then again, if Tony ever did recognize a good opening, he wouldn't know what to do with it. And when he did take advantage of one, it almost looked like he did it by accident. However he did it, that takes care of would-be King Wogan. The fake Vikings overrun the castle and take it back from the real Vikings. I have a feeling once they learned Wogan was dead, most of those guys lost their will to fight. Once we got rid of that stupid, egotistical mother Mer it's Merlin, the rest of the episode wasn't too bad. I'm glad he doesn't have any magic left so he can't come back. Ah, crap. That young man will rule all of England one day. Hail, great prophet of the obvious. Part of Guinevere's dowry is a big round table, surprise, surprise, and it would be most entertaining if he would shut up. Oh, one more thing. Arthur's already told me that you two are to be the very first knights of his round table. of miracles has just begun. If we can get through the last three minutes without any more out of you, that will be a miracle. That's strange. What's wrong? I don't know. Ray, what do you make of that? Well, they look like interference waves. Well, that's what I thought, but we never use those frequencies. When we interfere with ourselves, we always use different frequencies. I'll have it checked out. This interference, is there any way it could affect Tony and Doug? No, I don't believe so. Well, this is Dr. Swain. 
Will you run an immediate check on channels 100 to infinity? Channels 100 to infinity. I wonder how long that'll take. <laughs> How did he get here? Dr. Ann McGregor. I'm here to take you with me. No, it's not an alien. No, it's not someone from the future. It's an alien from the future. Everywhere in the galaxy, we have a surplus of silver face paint, and by Gadfrey, we're going to use it. I repeat, we have given up. The last three episodes all have aliens. Somehow, General Kirk will decide that last guy looked like a time traveler from the future. What told him that? We have to assume it was the script because we won't get any other explanation. And if you're going to do Merlin, at least make him someone we want to root for. I was hoping the Vikings would let Doug and Tony and Arthur go and put him on the rack. Speaking of Vikings, if I start going into all the historical issues, we'll be here until day after tomorrow. Let's just say, when that encyclopedia salesman came to the office door, somebody should have bought one.